Billionaire business investor Mark Cuban is a moron. He came down with Trump derangement syndrome years ago and appeared on CNBC, the financial news channel, to talk about the election and made this ridiculous assertion that the mainstream media is actually conservative. She was at 28 uh, percent favorability. Right. And then, as you say, things change. She's all the way up to about 50 percent. Talking about Kamala Harris's approval ratings before the overtime liberal media industrial complex gaslighting to promote her as the savior of our country. I would just argue that filling in the blanks does not account for that move and that the main the, the media coverage has been so positive and, and almost marked that it's like so deceptive as well. Sir. We don't have to worry about trying to elect this guy who is clearly not not up for another four so, years. And, and it's not Donald Trump. So they would have the, the left and the people that need a candidate would have embraced anyone at that point. And, you know, ABC, it was 100. They would have embraced a ham sandwich as long as it wasn't Joe Biden, just like they embraced John Fetterman, who has the brain of a ham sandwich for Senate in Pennsylvania, even though he couldn't literally finish the sentence. And, you know, ABC, it was 100 percent positive uh, coverage of her, 92 percent negative of Trump. So Elon says, so what, cha most... what changed the media coverage? OK, first, brainwash the mentally enslaved masses, obviously. What's the most watched news channel? Who are the most watched and viewed and listened to podcasts? Who are the most watched and listened to or Is it viewed? Fox? Yeah. Yeah. No, it is not. Fox is the most viewed cable news channel, but certainly not by far the most viewed news channel. The old-fashioned broadcast networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS, by far eclipse Fox News' viewership every single night. Not to mention the morning shows on those old-fashioned broadcast networks as well. Right? Okay. I mean, it's not close, right? The number one shows are all Fox. The number one podcast, so Lean in, Right. Even in spite big, of that, she's been able to... The reason why the number one podcasts like Tucker Carlson and Dan Bongino are conservative podcasts is because those are the only places that we can actually get conservative news because you're not going to get it on any of the major broadcast networks or really any of the major newspapers or online outlets other than... Fox News and Newsmax, which still probably literally has fewer viewers, not to disrespect them because I think they're great, fewer viewers than my YouTube channel. And if you look at the political affiliations and especially the donations from the mainstream journalists, almost all of them are Democrats. Now, many of them are technically registered as independents because they try to pretend that they're objective and that they're not biased. But if you look at the political affiliations of all major journalists from the major outlets over the years, like this chart going back to the 1970s, you can see that 25% of them were Republicans in 1971, and then it just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. And then in 2022, less than 4% of them are Republicans. His stupidity has no bounds. Look at this post from earlier this month. No question, he says, the mainstream media protects the Republican candidate, he can't even bring himself to say Donald Trump's name, by not reporting on what he literally says, if anyone else used the exact same language, he's talking about something he said at one of his rallies, they would dismiss them as incoherent, senile, incompetent, or worse. This is the same thing that Hillary Clinton said when she crawled out of the pit of hell, I think it was 24 hours or 48 hours after the second assassination attempt on Donald Trump to say that the mainstream media isn't demonizing Donald Trump enough. And I don't understand why it's so difficult for the press to have a consistent narrative about how dangerous uh, Trump is. Uh, you know, the late great uh, journalist, Harry Evans, uh, you know, one time uh, said that, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 journalists uh, should you know, really try to achieve objectivity. And by that, he said, I mean, they should cover the object. Well, the object in this case is Donald Trump, uh, his demagoguery, his uh, danger to our country and the world, and stick with it. Stay tuned, because there's more to come in this video, but real quick, subscribe to my channel for new here if you want more independent analysis like this that 
doesn't sugarcoat things like conservative ink in the corporate conservative media. Would you like to embarrass yourself any further, Mr. Cuban? When she was unable to answer the question about are you better off now than four years ago, I think that was illustrative. Well, four years ago, literally, we were in a pandemic. Look, we, it was an easy can, answer. We can look at exactly what happened. He's already been president. And we can look at what happened when she was vice president. And it's not good, the comparison. Being the president, Joe, as you know, is different than being vice president. And it's not close, so we, right? So she can, take, she, can, she can take credit for the good things that happened with Biden, but she didn't have anything to do with the bad Donald Trump. I'm sorry, sir, but as vice president, Kamal Harris was literally in charge of the border, which she not only left wide open, but opened even wider and encouraged the invasion of our country. Mark Cuban's idiocy inspired this headline from the Babylon Bee this week. Mark Cuban inspires thousands by proving even the very retarded can become wealthy. And by the way, the reason that he's a billionaire is because he got lucky during the dot-com boom with an investment in a website, broadcast.com, which aimed to take local AM sports radio stations and then feed them through the website so the people in other cities could listen to local sports. And then because there was so much insanity regarding speculation about what certain websites would be worth in the future. Yahoo, which had virtually unlimited money at the time, bought the website for over $5 billion. And then it wasn't even close to being financially sustainable, even though it was a good idea. And so then <laughs> soon afterwards, they shut it down. And here's Mr. Cuban back in 2015, talking to Patrick Bet David before he really blew up, sounding like a normal person, a normal, educated American. So one would call you a Democrat. And, and no, no, hell no, no, no. Look, there's there's different things for, for different reasons, right? Would you be comfortable with a capitalist like Donald Trump being our president? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I like Donald and he's smart. You know, like a lot of um, candidates and politicians, you vote for not what they say, but knowing that 99% of they say won't come true, what they'll do Crap, once they get to see it. who's going to follow through. And do I think he's smart enough to figure that out and then just do the right thing after he's elected? Yes. And then Hillary and Bernie <laughs> say, okay, tax the 1% and that'll pay for everything. Doesn't work, right? Won't work. You know, Hillary's um, pay for college. Her plan is ridiculous. It'll increase <laughs> college costs, not reduce. You know, so they don't. So that was before the liberal media industrial complex made it virtually impossible for any A-list celebrity to support Donald Trump publicly and keep their career. So now he's on CNBC promoting Kamala Harris and the communist agenda and claiming that the mainstream media is conservative. Oh, and by the way, he's also pipe dreaming about buying Fox News and Twitter which would never happen because he has a net worth of about $5 billion. And Elon bought Twitter for $44 billion. And even Fox News, which is owned by News Corp, uh, News Corp is worth $15 billion. But speaking of a billionaire buying up media, George Soros is trying to buy 200 radio stations across the country. And it looks like the Federal Communications Commission is expediting the approval. So, of course, he's just a philanthropist. George Soros is just an investor who is buying hundreds of radio stations across the country and propped up Vice News from going bankrupt for many, many years, just donating hundreds of millions of dollars to them. Here's one more example of just how bad Mark Cuban's Trump derangement syndrome is. He's upset that Donald Trump hasn't invested any money in startups or in companies that don't involve family members. For all Trump supporters, he says, a question, which startups has Donald Trump ever invested in that didn't involve a family member? And we all know that Haiti has been in the news lately since tens of thousands of Haitian immigrants were imported into Springfield, Ohio to brown the small towns. And the president of Haiti just spoke at the United Nations where he's demanding reparations for all the black people on the island. And because it's a third world country, there isn't a lot of modern conveniences in many parts of Haiti, like plumbing, <laughs> toilets, and running water. And apparently the president of Haiti doesn't know what a cup is or a glass to drink water. And so during his speech, 
he just picked up the uh, pitcher and <laughs> took a gulp <laughs> right from it. Res respect for its dignity. And in case you missed it, I launched this new Cat Lives Matter shirt from my online store, markdice.com, where you can click the link in the description below. And this one is available in the standard kind of unisex t-shirt and also a woman's cut as well. So if you don't see that on the main homepage of my online store, just click on this shirt and then scroll down a little bit and you'll see it down below. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat.